Hey there, my name is James Lee. Welcome to 5149, where I make videos about business, politics, and society. If you're like me and many others, this past week has been awesome. I've had a lot of fun seeing hedge funds lose billions of dollars, uh, watching billionaires cry on TV about things not being fair, and learning new words like, has the squeeze been squoze? I mean, yeah, I spent way too much time on Wall Street bets this week. We're going to the moon! Anyway, it seems like David has finally taken down Goliath in the form of a bunch of Redditors exposing and punishing Wall Street giants who got a little too greedy. But the reality is always a little bit more complicated than that, and that's what I want to break down today. Yes, the people finally want a battle against the ruling class and the elites, but what about the war? Sure, yes, a couple hedge funds lost a few billion dollars, but there are thousands of other hedge funds out there doing exactly the same things. New ones are gonna pop up every day. It's basically a never-ending game of whack-a-mole. So today I wanna to try to make sense of all of this and look at not just the battle, but also the war. And, and when I mean war, I'm talking about exploring how this GameStop saga could fundamentally change our system for the better if we focus on the right things. I know that people are enamored with the idea of taking down Wall Street and maybe the potential to make a quick buck, but I wanna ask this question. What is the end game? Like I mentioned before, I'm not knocking the Reddit movement at all. I think it's awesome that the little guys are playing the same game as the big boys, but that's not the whole story. I know the media has portrayed the GameStop short squeeze as Reddit versus Wall Street, but there were also a bunch of other big players and institutional investors that were on the side of the Redditors simply because there's money to be made. So for me, beyond Wall Street bets trying to shoot meme stocks to the moon and making hedge funds bleed, I think there are other legit good things that can and should come out of this. First, now is as good a time as ever to make the case that the stock market should not be an indicator of economic health. Sure, the stock market has done incredibly well over the last decade under Trump and Obama, but I don't think people's lives are better today than they were 10, 20, 30 years ago. Taking a look at this graphic from Pew Research, over the past 50 years, the gaps in income between upper income and middle and lower income households are rising and the share held by middle income households is falling. That means the stock market growth doesn't benefit everyone equally. According to NYU professor Edward Wolf, the richest 10% of households controlled 84% of the total value of stocks. So really, the stock market isn't a snapshot of the economy, it's a graph outlining the emotional state of rich people. And I think something we learned over the past week, but really it's something we all knew, is that the value of a stock isn't even tied to the financial performance of the company. I know all the experts and valuation guys say it's based on earnings and this and that, but in the end, a lot of it is just speculative trading based on storytelling and momentum. You're literally investing in a piece of paper and the value of this piece of paper can go up and down depending kind of on what people feel and say about it. So the next time a politician or anyone else references the stock market to talk about the economy, I'm calling BS. We should all call BS. Honestly, I think the New York Stock Exchange really belongs in Vegas. Uh, I'm joking a little bit, but really, it should just be like a big sports betting board in a casino, except stocks. In a way, it's actually a little bit more rigged than sports because betting on stocks is like betting on an NBA game where the referees are in on it, right? Hedge funds, they take these massive short or long positions and they put out some research report on why the company's stock is not worth what it is or it's worth more than it is, and then the stock tanks or goes up, and then they make money. Trading stocks is like a lawless street pickup game with a crooked ref, which leads me to my second point. It's time to regulate the referees. The reaction from Wall Street, CNBC, and billionaires after the GameStop stock popped off revealed clearly that the game is rigged and they're fine with it being rigged as long as they are the winners. Um, hedge funds, they've been doing this for years and it sucks that it's only when the little guys get involved and win, Congress is like, oh, well, we gotta look into this now. I wanna play Mark Cuban's reaction to all this because I think he's got it pretty spot on. Look, I think one thing this definitely does is shines a light on, on some of the behavior. I, I think that there could be a call for additional regulation coming on that. What, what are your thoughts there? Well, I mean, if you're misleading, right? If you're, you're pumping and dumping to the upside or if you're shorting and, and misleading people to the downside, yes, that's obviously something the regulators should look at. But remember, when you short a stock, there's a VIG on it, right? You have to borrow it, and you're paying some percentage to the, the, whoever owns the stock and is loaning it out. It's not the first time that low-flowed or heavily shorted stocks have been targeted. 
It's just very visible, and it's just not the normal suspects that are doing the targeting. There are many hedge funds that, that have made a lot of money over the years targeting heavily shorted stocks. And so I don't think this is anything different. It's just the people who are, who are making the push aren't who we expect them to be. And so that's why I like it. Right. It's not necessarily about changing the rules or more regulation. I mean, it's kind of all gambling anyways. I mean, some rules should be changed and looked at because I don't think you should be able to short a stock multiple times and not disclose it. But to me, now that we have everybody's attention, it's about reining in the people who have the ability to put their thumbs on the scale. Like looking into why retail trading platforms like Robinhood block trades of certain stocks while hedge funds and other institutional investors were unaffected. And I think it's time to make a change and prevent members of Congress from trading stock. For example, Nancy Pelosi, who's working with Joe Biden to push the sales of electric vehicles, just bought a ton of options on Tesla or former Georgia Senator David Perdue. While sitting on the cybersecurity subcommittee, Perdue actively bought and sold stocks of cybersecurity company FireEye when it signed a contract with the Army Cyber Command. He also bought stock in BWX Technologies before taking charge of the subcommittee and sold it after the company secured funding from the Navy. If you're making the rules, you should not be able to take advantage and enrich yourself. There's actually a bill right now in the Senate sponsored by Elizabeth Warren and in the House by Pramila Jayapal that addresses this very issue of banning lawmakers from trading stocks. But beyond legislation, things like social networks and crowdsourcing have already created a fundamental shift in the power structure because now retail investors can basically function like a decentralized Wall Street hedge fund and Wall Street is reacting. Short seller Andrew Left, whose company Citron was one of the hedge funds to spark this week's battle with small time traders over GameStop, said in a YouTube video on Friday that his company would no longer publish short selling research. So this got me thinking, how else can crowdsourcing be leveraged? Something else that hasn't been talked about very much in this whole thing is corporate governance. So besides potentially making a ton of money, being a shareholder entitles you to certain rights, one of which is voting power, which includes the power to elect directors and give inputs on proposals on fundamental changes affecting the company. Now, usually retail investors haven't participated in this very much, but institutional investors and activist investors do. An activist investor is an individual or group that buys a significant stake in a public company in order to influence how the company is run, such as by obtaining seats on its board of directors. Now, usually activist investors only care about money and returns, like in 2015 when Carl Icahn pushed Apple CEO Tim Cook to use the company's cash pile to increase the size of its share buyback program, thereby increasing the stock price. But to me, I think there's a real opportunity here for retail investors to band together and become kind of like this crowdsourced activist investor and change companies for the better, like increasing worker representation on a company's board or advocating for environmental sustainability. I know this sounds a little bit crazy, but this has been done in the past by nonprofits to some degree of success already, such as, as you sow, a nonprofit founded in 1992 that has utilized shareholder advocacy to increase corporate responsibility on a broad range of environmental and social issues like reducing emissions, achieving wage justice, and eliminating slavery in supply chains. So yeah, by banding together a group of investors, you can not only drive up the stock price, but you can actually force companies to make real changes. I don't know, maybe I'm making a bigger story out of this than it is. Maybe it is just about trading stocks, but I think if we think bigger, think about how crowdsourcing can be leveraged in different ways, we can do more than just make a few hedge funds bleed. That's it for this week. Thank you so much for watching. Not a big stocks guy myself, so of course I didn't have any skin in the game, unfortunately. I mean, the stock market, a little bit speculative, risky, not always the best idea, but I hope some of you did. Let me know what your thoughts are about how we can leverage crowdsourcing in different ways uh, in the comments below. If you enjoyed my video, like it, share it, also subscribe if you haven't already done so. It really helps a small voice like mine gain traction. Uh, I appreciate all of you guys' time and I'll see you next week.